So hello and a welcome to the computer lab. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the Unify UVC G4 Bullet. And I'm gonna be talking through the whole process. So I'm gonna be basically doing the unboxing and show you what you get in the box for your money. And then I'm going to show you how to add this camera and I'm gonna do that in the office. So I'm gonna add that into the software uh, using an Apple iOS device, an Apple iPhone. And then once it's been added into the system and um, onto the cloud key, uh, so you can access it through Protect, and then I'm going to install it on a house, show you the ball mounted mechanism uh, being installed onto a soffit on a house. And then once that is done, and I'm finally gonna show you the um, web user interface that you can access to look at the Protect and look at your cameras. Now you can do it all through your iPad or iPhone, uh, but I'm just gonna show you the two different versions. So I'm gonna add it in uh, to the system using an iPhone, and then I'm gonna show you in a Google Chrome web browser, the actual view that you see at the end. So it's the whole process from start to finish. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get into the video. So before we get started, I will put a link in the description box below for the Unify UVC G4 Bullet. This will be an Amazon affiliate link. Uh, basically it means if you purchase through that link, I will receive a small commission uh, if you buy the camera. Okay, so looking inside the lid, you get the quick start guide, a little QR code and a little QR code to download Unify Protect onto your Apple or Android device. So you scan that in and it opens the Protect. And if you scan the one in the front just there, you'll get the uh, quick start guide. Uh, in theory, you should do. When I tried the link, it didn't actually work, but it should actually open the quick start guide. Okay, so the camera itself. This is obviously the main body of the UVC G4 bullet. Um, let's look what else you get. That's the pole mounting bracket, which obviously mounts to, you put your pole there, and it screws through the actual um, socket the way around, actually, but it screws through to the camera if you're uh, pole mounting it. You get a rubber grommet just there, which we'll be using a bit later on in the video. You also get some screws, some roll plugs, and some um, sort of standard screws that screw through the actual mounting bracket to the pole mounting clip. Obviously nothing else in there. Some silica gel to keep the damp out, uh, and that's all you get in the box. You get the main camera, some roll plugs, a grommet, and a pole mounting uh, circular bracket. You can see this there. Okay, so this is the main camera body. Quite a heavy unit, uh, all aluminium, apart from the ball joint, which is a plastic um, bit. You also get the, let's just get rid of this actually, another silica gel, if I can get my fingers in there, just to keep the damp out again. So we'll get rid of that one. And you can see that's the aluminium there, the aluminium casing. Um, and I'll just screw the actual back mounting plate off here so you can get a view of the ball joint. So you can see there you've got a cable entry point uh, for the mounting plate and obviously your RJ45, your Cat6, whatever passes through that. You've then got this knuckle joint here and that's the plastic bit there that I'm just offering up to the aluminium backing plate there. And then you turn the uh, locking nut there when you're fastening it onto the wall. So you can see how it moves across uh, along the ball joint. They're quite tight like this, but really once you've moved and set it, it doesn't really matter. So they are tight to move. Uh, once you've got it on, on your wall on in hand, it's easy enough to move. Uh, but it locks in place once you tighten down the lock nut against this wall plate here. So let me just all get, show you the backing plate. So this, uh, not the backing plate, the pole mounting clip. So this is the pole mounting clip. I'm just going to offer it up to show you the um, the cable entry point. Nothing really exciting, but you'll get to uh, see how it goes. So say that uh, white uh, pole mounting clip was your wall. And obviously your cable will go through like so. You can see it would pass through the uh, cable entry point there. Um, and then obviously then you can put that into the back of your camera once it's plugged into a PoE switch. But I'll just put it on the side there, you can see that's the pole mounting clip being mounted to a pole. I'm just showing it back to front really. Uh, but you would normally have it mounted on your pole and then tied around and then your cable passing through if you was doing that type of installation. We're not going to be doing that type of installation, we're going to be doing a wall mounted one. Uh, which I'll show you as we get later on into the video uh, and you'll understand what I mean. So let's just put them to one side and let's get uh, this camera and just show you the the other part that unscrews so let me just do this make sure I don't get it cross threaded get it on right like so, so screw the that's your mounting plate that I'm screwing onto the uh, lock nut there and I'm just going to unscrew the main body from the camera itself uh, from the uh, the main body of the camera from the actual arm here so there's another locking nut that unscrews like so and you can see the mounting arm has sort of a flat on the bottom just there. Uh, so you can only get it in one way once you get it mounted up. And you can see when you pass it through like so, 
that you can get clear access for your uh, cat six or whatever else you're running gonna run down there or cat five if that's the case so let's just move that out of the way and let's show you the main body of the camera so this is the main body quite a heavy unit it's got two plastic films on the front so obviously don't forget to take them off once you have the camera mounted if that's what you are doing you also get a protective little sticker on the back I'm gonna remove this it's gonna put my finger over the QR code because that's the QR code for the camera so I'm just going to remove it like so and you should see the RJ45 like so with the PoE in. So this camera is powered by power over ethernet uh, and that's the PoE in entry point and there's a little reset switch just to the right of it and like I said my fingers on top of a QR code if you're installing it with that um, if you're struggling to install it in the way that I'll show you in a minute. So that's the camera itself but let's get it added into Unify Protect. So I've got it plugged into a PoE switch and it's all powered on so I'll give it a minute just to power on correctly. I've now opened up Unify Protect on my iOS device. It's logging into my cloud key uh, and it should find it automatically. Um, so we'll just click the back arrow and then there we go and it's found the camera automatically. I've not done anything so I'm going to click add at the bottom to add this camera to my system. It then says okay uh, do you want to rename this? So depending on where you are mounting your camera will depend on obviously if you rename it um, and I'm just going to take the actual black uh, the protective film off the front of the camera uh, just so we can uh, get a clearer picture actually so let me just remove these off I will put them back on briefly just when I mount it on the outside uh, but I'll just take that off just so we can see what's going on and there you've got a picture of my <laughs> nothing exactly exciting to see apart from a camera light so I'm going to rename this anyway and I'm going to uh, just delete the UVC G4 bullet text um, out of there and I'm just going to call mine front of house like so and then click next or done and then it adds the camera now at this point um, it will update the camera if it needs an update so it says camera disconnected so it's now checking the camera renaming it and then if it needs an update it will do it automatically without you doing anything or should do you can update it in the actual um, user interface by logging into your cloud key through a Google Chrome browser or something like that but you can see it's all done it all automatically without me doing anything so whilst this update um, is being applied I'll fast forward this part of the video uh, so that's why the top picture is skipping along because obviously I've fast forwarded it you don't want to watch that bar go across the screen so once the camera's updated I'll just move something in front of the camera so we've got something to look at it will briefly disconnect and then it should refresh and there we go you can see I've just put something in front of the camera so we've got something a bit better to look at than just a light uh, and now the camera is viewing that I'll turn it to its side and then you can see the view once it just catches up of the UVC G4 bullet camera so that's it now installed on our cloud key in our protect software so now we're ready to install the camera on the outside what I would say if you are following along or thinking of doing this make sure you set the cameras up on your system before you actually physically go to install them on your property so we need to find uh, the best location for it um, so I've got a couple of options here I can mount it to the wall or I can go onto the soffit which I'm going to do you can see there is a security light in my way um, which is going to be removed the only reason I've left it there is because um, uh, we're thinking of putting a infrared uh, blaster uh, using the same power source that the security light is using so I don't want to remove it and leave the wire dangling uh, so it's in the way of the camera a bit at the moment um, but it is switched off um, so I'm going to be mounting it to the top soffit like I've got in that position I've got there and the reason I'm doing that is because I, I already know the cables are behind there because we've already fed the cable through uh, there is a soffit vent in there that I've got access to so I can get to the cable so I just need to mount it onto the soffit and obviously if you're following on or doing your own install just make sure you haven't got the camera mounted too near a wall because uh, you'll get the uh, infrared uh, bouncing back off walls and stuff like that if you're mounting it too near to an external wall or anything that's overhanging or something like that. So I'm going to get the marker pen anyway and mark my uh, camera where I want it in that position. So I'm just going to put a couple of little marks just around the outside and I can remove the camera and then I can get my backing plate and then just offer that up. Obviously with the cable entry to the rear. Uh, I'm not going to be using the cable entry because I'm going to be coming in from my soffit itself. So I'm just going to mark the two screw points just so I know where I'm going and I can put a hole in the centre uh, between them two screw holes like so and like I say because my cable's already been run because I've run the cable into the soffit uh, board already there's a cable in there uh, and I've just got access to it through the soffit vent so I've got my hand in the soffit vent there and I'm feeding it through the uh, hole I have just drilled so I'm just going to feed that in and once I've got that cable through um, this is cat 6 cable 
So I'll just take that uh, feeder cable off there and take the bit of insulation tape off I've got. And I've got a nice clean end. Like I said, I've got plenty of room in that soffit board so I can um, feed it back up into the, that excess cable or I could cut it off to length um, depending on what your install is like. That's what you might have to do. So there's two screws, that, that, like I said, that came in the box and these are stainless screws so it's always worth using them. Uh, obviously if you've lost them you can use something else but try and use the stainless screws because uh, it just stops anything rotting if you get any damp or moisture in there. So the two screws on the mounting back plate, make sure it's fixed on nice and secure. Make sure your cable's not got nicked in any way, so you saw me just moving it there. So now I'm just going to put the grommet on before we make up the cable. Uh, so make sure you get this the right way around. It's not going to be the end of the world if you don't, especially if um, obviously it's mounted under a soffit where it's pretty waterproof anyway. Um, but get the grommet on and then push that up like so. And you'll see that in a minute when I put my... Uh, camera on. Let me just put the soffit vent back in. So this is the soffit vent going back in. That's what it's used, like I said, to access the uh, cavity so I could run my cable. So that's back in now. And now we can get the end. So I'm going to put my boot on actually first. So put the boot of the Cat6 and I've just got a bit of tape. You see it's a bit slack on the actual uh, Cat6 cable so I'm just going to put a bit of insulation tape just to hold it in position while I make up the RJ45 end. And again, if you've not made up RJ45s before, uh, or not made up Cat6 or Cat5s, I do have a couple of videos on my channel, uh, which I'll put in uh, one of the top corners there, if you want to click on that to see how to make this cable up. Obviously, I've fast-forwarded it at this point, um, because it'll just be too long if I show that. So I'm just crimping the end on, and then pulling my boot down, and that's my cable made up. Obviously, you can test it if you've got some testers. I do these day in, day out, so I'm pretty confident that that's going to be a good connection. I do have a set of testers. But anyway, that's the cable made up and ready to go to the camera. So let's get the knuckle joint and let's pass that through. And you'll see that grommet going into the actual uh, shaft there. And I'll just hold it to the camera if I can, just so you can see. So you see it right at the end there. The grommet's now sealed into that shaft. And I can put the locking nut onto my backing plate and then just turn that locking nut. Bearing in mind, obviously, the tighter you have the locking nut, the more it will clamp the rotational. So don't do it too tight at this point. You need enough so you can uh, wiggle the camera around and move it around. You can always tighten it up afterwards. Click the RJ45 in like so. Make sure it's in secure. Just straightening the shaft up so it feeds in nicely. Just double checking it before I go in. And then offering it up to the second locking nut which attaches the main body to the arm, the swivel arm. So make sure that's nipped up and then we should be okay, make sure it's all secure and then give it a tilt and now I'm just positioning the camera to how I think, obviously we can tweak this afterwards once we get the uh, camera in rough position. Um, take the film off, the, I put the films back on so I didn't scratch anything when I was mounting it so I'm taking these back off again now. Uh, and that's the camera now mounted. Um, like I said, that screw to that will be coming out later. But anyway, now the camera is mounted. Let's open a Google Chrome browser. And I'm going to go to unify.ui.com. Uh, and then I'm going to click on my cloud key. And then go on to protect, not network. And then we're presented with the Unify Protect dashboard. Now obviously this video is about the UVC G4 bullet, it's not about the uh, protect system itself. So I will skip over a few things that I think are relevant and I'll just go down the menu on the left hand side. Uh, but I'm not going to go into any detail about how protect works, I might do another video for that. Okay, so obviously this is my Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus that it's showing there and I've got a menu to the left of it. I've got my dashboard which we're on at the moment. I've then got devices, live view, events, time lapse roles, activity, and then settings. And then it's worth mentioning uh, that Unify have added these recent smart detections or smart detections you can switch on for people and cars, which is a nice touch that they've added this into the product. So it's good for you to take snapshots and see what's happened in the zones that you have um, set. Okay, so I'm clicked on live view. These are the two cameras that we were looking at earlier. I'm gonna click on the front of house, which is the UVC G4 bullet, and there's the camera itself. 
Okay, so that's the end of the video. That's how to install the Unify UVC G4 Bullet and using the Unify Protect software. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, please do subscribe to my channel. Please do hit the bell icon to be alerted to any new videos I make. And also hit me up with any comments below. They are always appreciated. And thanks again for visiting the Computer Lab.